Okay, so the second fly is a new one to me. I never tied it until this year. I've tied a bunch of soft tackles, but um, I picked up a book that I think Landing first brought to the club's attention. Um, the History of Fly Tying in 50 Flies. Yep. Yep, and one of the flies is actually not this fly, but this is a descendant of that fly. Uh, this is called the Partridge in Orange, and this is a pretty historical fly. It has its roots in uh, northern England, Scotland. Uh, I believe I read that it uh, was first referenced in the 1840s in a book called The Contemplative Angler. Um, so it goes way back. Uh, strangely, it was all but dead in fly tying until about the 1980s, apparently, when it got a big resurgence, uh, started being used more in, in competition. So I like it because it's super simple and I think it's pretty attractive. Um, it's supposed to be kind of like a caddis pupa emerger imitator. Uh, I have no weight. It's basically thread dubbing if you choose and partridge hackle, uh, Hungarian partridge. So it couldn't be simpler, couldn't be cheaper. Um, a lot of people tie these on dry fly hooks. I prefer the look of uh, the curved scud hook, uh, barbless. I think it just kind of looks more unique and more of an emerger type look. So gun, partridge. Okay. I'm using fire orange thread because I, that looks more pleasant to my colorblind eyes. <laughs> but it's typically tied in traditional red. And uh, often this little dubbing uh, spot here behind the partridge, uh, I think traditionally that is not there. Uh, but I find that dubbing behind any kind of hackle uh, makes a hackle flare out more if it gets under the water. So I like to have a little spot. And a lot of people do tie that. They typically tie it in, in an orange also. Uh, but for this pattern, I kind of prefer the amber. I think it looks a little, little cooler. So fishing this cow with a heavier hook, do you tend to prefer that it goes subsurface? Um, no. In fact, I'll probably uh, false cast this a, t a couple times. The way I like this thing riding is when it's in the water, that hackle is keeping the head above the water and the ass end in the, in the water. And it looks like it's emerging. Well, the hackle's enough to hold the hook up. It's enough to hold it for a couple casts and then it will go under. Um, actually in that, that 1840s book, it actually details how to fish it. And they actually suggest that you pretty much false cast it into the water so that it gets wet enough to sink. So it was, it was built intended to go subsurface, but um, I find that it, if it goes subsurface, it's only going to be a couple inches. This thing is super light. It's not going to get down fast. So I, I tend to fish it as kind of an emerging pattern where it's just sticking out of the water. And you don't grease your leader or do anything to your leader to enhance the presentation of the fly? Nope. I am far too lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Now, a few false casts is usually enough to uh, keep it dry enough. Um, I don't even put uh, dry shake or, uh, or any of the, um, what do you call them? Any of the dressing to, to keep it dry. Um, because if it gets wet, I think it's just another presentation I'm giving the fly. And I have lost my hook. Okay, so we will be tying this on number 12, barbless scud hook. I'm actually using a hook from Fly Shack as well by a company called Saber. And 
I've only fished them a couple times now, but so far they seem pretty good, pretty sharp, strong enough, and they're fairly cheap. A hundred flies for about, uh, I think it was seven bucks for a hundred uh, hooks, I should say. They have a little bit offset bend to them. Uh, for this pattern, I like to kind of bend that back. That is purely aesthetics. If anything, it probably decreases my hookup percentage. For thread, I'm using a 140 denier fire orange UTC. I almost never use a flat thread. Um, I really prefer the, uh, the more braided style of the uni thread. Um, but for this hook, you really don't want to see, you, you want the thread to uh, kind of lay flat on the hook. So this is my exception is when I am building thread bodies, I kind of prefer more of the flat wire style or wire or thread. So simply tying that on, I'm going to bring it, yeah, I'm going to bring it back to about uh, here. And actually I should, I've cut that tail off first. And simply bring it back, carefully having the thread wrap touching each other. And I stop about right there. Next step is the dubbing ball. I think I mentioned I hate dubbing loops. Put a little dubbing wax on there. So I'm using the uh, hairline amber dubbing and it's a natural dubbing, very fine. I really like fine dubbing um, because typically I like very tight dubbing balls. And the fine stuff wraps to the thread much, much better, dubs much better. So I've added a little wax to my fingers again. It's a great habit to get into in COVID days instead of licking your fingers like I used to do. And doing kind of a figure eight ball. It doesn't need to be very big, very subtle. So I've got my ball there. Now for the wing, what have I done with you? So we're using Hungarian partridge and the pack I have is all sorts of colors. Uh, this grizzly looking one is kind of one I prefer. And what you want to do is you want to strip off the uh, marabou looking part of the feather. Get it down to where you only have the barbels left that don't have the fuzziness. Then you want to take them back and grab them by the tip. You want to pull them back so that you leave a little tip left, just like that. And we're going to tie it in from the tips. Now we want the hackle pointing backwards. So we're gonna tie this in at a 45. Let's see if I can show you guys this better. We're gonna tie this in at a 45 with the feather cupped down. And 
I'm gonna totally mess that up. Got too much memory in my uh, thread here. Tie that in pretty well. And I like to tie off, cut off the excess before I start wrapping. Feathers are small and delicate enough to warrant using hackle pliers. If you guys haven't gotten yourself one of these uh, Stonefo micro hackle pliers, I highly recommend them. Sorry, forgot. Make sure your thread is advanced all the way up to the eye. And then we're going to wrap this. Constantly pushing back as we wrap. To make sure they don't trap anything and they point back. And about three wraps is sufficient. And you want to trap that. Tie it down, two wraps over, kind of navigating your way through the uh, barbs there. And a couple wraps in front. And try not to cut your thread. Okay, so Normally, what I use for this is I uh, I never tie off with the half half hitch tool, but I really do love using the half hitch tool to push down and I went too far. That was a nice recovery. Yeah, thanks. So build up a nice little head. This is uh, all aesthetics. Then I don't tie off of the half hitch. I use a whip finish. Make that nice and tight. And sometimes I like to brush out a little bit in case any of those guys got trapped a little bit. You don't want to brush up against the body. The thread will fray and that dubbing ball will, uh, you want it to look tight. And then this is a prime candidate for the head cement. There you go, there's the partridge in orange. Very simple fly, very effective. Yeah, I can less than every time you cast it. Sorry, what was that? Oh, just gonna say, I can definitely attest to its effectiveness. I was in Iowa last October and uh, for two nights I caught a micro caddis hatch and I used a size 14 um, partridge in orange soft tackle and I just cleaned up. Yeah, right, so the was going it. down, the, the, the hatch came off, and, and uh, they would take it um, either dead drift or I would just jiggle it a little bit. And I caught, you know, without even moving 
from one spot, I caught about 15, 15 or 20 uh, brown and rainbow trout all, all in one night. And the nicest thing was I had the whole place to myself. No one was there. Yeah. So I just, I like, you know, I think, uh, I think there's a resurgence of the classic flies. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I think sometimes well, I they give the, the fish too much credit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I use these during hatches because a lot of times I find they're, they're taking the emergers and not the adults. And I find mm -hmm. the soft tackles uh, just dead drifting them. They, they, they make a nice imitation of, a, of an emerger. Or yeah. sometimes if you jiggle them, you know, it, it looks like they're trying to break the, uh, through the surface film. And I mm -hmm. prefer these over uh, dries, actually, as far as matching the hatch goes. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, if you fish the dripless, too, you, you often know that it's a lot of times the hatches aren't very evident. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you throw one of these out when you're getting nothing on, uh, you know, more on nymphs or, you know, deeper diving wet flies. Right. I think sometimes if you throw this out, you'll find that, uh, oh, they've been eating stuff just subsurface and you don't see the pop. You don't see anything going on. Right. So, yeah, very simple. You can tie a dozen of these in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very effective. Simple and effective. This, well, this is one of my favorite flies to fish. Any other questions? Yeah, Kyle, do you ever put a bead on that? No, uh, I haven't. Um, I think if I were going to, so this is pretty similar to like the, the winter caddis, which has a, has a bead. So I think if I were going to uh, fish something that deep with that much hackle, I'd probably go to like the winter caddis. Hey, Kyle, do you use any other colors for thread? Yeah, so, so this thing is, uh, if you look online and you look for partridge and fly, you'll find that there's a purple, there's a uh, olive, there's, I think, I think Orvis actually, their official fly that they list in their fly tying thing is a, is a partridge and olive, I think. Yeah. I can't remember, but I, I don't think it was orange. Um, but what, from what I can tell though, this is one of the original colors uh, mm -hmm. that this fly was tied in most. I'm not quite sure why, if I had to hazard a guess, some kind of dye was easy to find in Northern England that gave an orange color. I was going to say, part of the yellow too is a, is a very popular one too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Pretty sure. Very nice, Kyle. Good job. Anybody have any questions for him about this? Or hey, great job, Kyle. Yeah, hey, very thank nice. You. Very nice. Okay. And I tied the whole thing without my glasses on. How about that? 